Hello everyone, here comes an interesting concept for the motion of the charged particles. If a vector cross u vector is equal to null vector, then the path of the particles will be straight line. While as if a vector cross u vector is not equal to a null vector or zero vector, then the path of particles will be parabolic. Let's see the things on the board. Suppose here is a charged particle charge Q and mass M. This particle is released in gravity free space. So there is no Mg, there is no air resistance. Only force acting on this particle is due to the electric field. This particle will have the acceleration along the field. We are assuming the particle to be positively charged. A vector will be equal to F vector divided by the mass and F vector will be Q times E vector. Okay. Now particle starts from rest. It's U is given as zero. Net force on the particle is vertically upward. So the particle will keep on moving straight. You agree with that? Another case. Suppose a particle is projected upwards. U vector is like this. Particle has charge Q, particle has mass M. What will be the path of this particle? Again, the path will be straight line because A vector in this direction. Okay, same charge. So A vector is in this direction. The path will be straight line. Now, these things can be verified using this trick. For this case, U is 0. So A cross U will become 0. So the path of particle is straight line. For this case, what is the angle between A vector and U vector? 0 degree and if angle is 0 degree then what you will get as the cross product in the cross product when you put sine 0 degree the final answer will become the null vector so the path of this particle is also straight line suppose a particle was given u vector like this okay vertically downwards particle has the charge q has the mass m now for this particle also the a vector is upward what will be the path of this particle? The answer is again straight line because this time the angle between A vector and U vector is 180 degree. And when we operate the cross product, here comes sine 180 degree. Everyone knows sine 180 degree will become 0. So the path of particle will be again a straight line. Got it? This particle will initially slow down. It will stop at some moment and then will go back along this line straight okay let's move to the next case when the a cross u is not equal to zero here again i am considering a charged particle having charge q and mass m let's say it is given the initial velocity in this direction for calculation purpose we are considering this direction as the x-axis Okay, and this vertically upward we are taking as the y axis. This one now, where is the electric force on this charged particle? You can tell directly it will be upwards because this is a positively charged particle, so it will experience the electric force along the electric field. Here is the a vector of this charged particle. What will be the path of the particle according to this a cross u when we operate? A is non-zero, U is non-zero and there comes sine 90 degree. Angle between A vector and U vector is 90 degree. So the resultant is non-zero. Path will be parabolic. Let's prove it. Particle will be moving like this on the parabolic path. At some time t, let us write the coordinates of particle. You can take up this height as y. And you can take up this as x if you set up the origin here 0 comma 0. Agree with that? Let us write the data. The x will be equal to ut. Do you agree? In x direction, there is no acceleration. Only force acting on the particle is in the y direction. So in x direction, we can write speed into time is equal to the distance traveled. In y direction, the particle is being accelerated. So y will be equal to what? 0 into t plus half qe by m 
multiplied with t square. I hope you understand this thing. In y direction, the initial velocity is 0. So, put the 0 here. Acceleration is qe by m for this charge particle and then t square. Now, we name this as the equation number 1. We name this as the equation number 2. From equation 1, can we submit the value of t in equation number 2? Check it once. This t can be replaced here. So, how the expression of the y will look like? It will become qe by 2m multiplied with x by u whole square. Do you agree with this expression? This expression is pretty interesting. If we look carefully, then it is resembling y is proportional to x square. If y is proportional to x square, it means what should be the path? It indicates a parabola. Got it? Nice and intuitive concept. And the y can be used to determine the q by m ratio also. If we know the e, x, u, everything, we can easily find the q by m ratio. Clear? We'll be taking up a question on this once you note it down. I hope you are done with your calculations. So, let's check the answers here. First of all, we'll determine the nature of charge. So, on Q1, how much is the charge? Actually, it is 0. After projecting from the origin, Q1 is just going straight. There is no deflection. There is no force on the Q1. Because F vector is equal to Q times E vector. Okay. When the Q is 0, the force will become 0. Already it's gravity free space, so no mg, there is no air resistance. Got it? That's why it is going undeflected. It is not experiencing any force. Clear? Now, for Q2 and Q3, the force is in the direction of electric field. It means the Q2 is a positive charge as well as the Q3 is also a positive charge. I hope you agree with this. They are experiencing the force along the electric field. Whenever the charge is positive, then force experienced by the charge is in the direction of the electric field. Now, we have to compare their Q by M ratio. For that comparison, we remember one expression from the previous computation. Y was equal to QE by 2M X by U square at a given moment of time. You remember that all these particles were projected with the same initial velocity from the origin at t is equal to 0. So, we can use this equation. At this moment, at time t, if we check, all these particles have the same x coordinate. So, x is same. Their initial projection speed is same. 2 is equivalent data for everyone. So, we can directly write that y is proportional to q by m. Got it? Greater the deflection, greater is the charge to mass ratio. We can directly see y1 is least. Actually, y1 is 0. Okay? It's moving along the x-axis. Then comes the y2 and then comes the y3. So, we can write that Q1 by M1 is least. This data is actually 0. Then comes the Q2 by M2 and then comes the Q3 by M3. I hope you got the same answer. Okay. If you understood this very well, let me bring another set of question for you. What if I introduce one more charge into the picture? Let's say this is some charge and I name it Q4, having the mass M4. At the time t, Q4 is going like this. Now, can you repeat your answers in comment box? I'll wait for your answers. Stay awesome. See you again.